We are starting a new series! What? What? We're starting a new series. Oh. Well, that's nice. All right, well, welcome to our visual commentary of Philippians. Today we're covering chapter one, verses one through 11. One, 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 one. Today I am joined by the wonderful Kia. Hi, Kia. Hi, guys. What is, what is that smell? That's me. Oh, uh, it's really bad. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, I'm excited to be here and talk about Philippians. Thank you so much for being here, Kia. Okay, we have a lot to cover, so can you quickly tell me what is your favorite game? Scategories. Favorite comfort food? Uh, Thai food, probably a good curry. Cats or dogs? Dogs, for sure dogs. Those guys are great. I love dogs too. I also love cats, but dogs more. Okay, <laughs> moving on. We are going to explore a new book of the Bible today called Philippians that was also written by Paul. Thought you'd get rid of him, eh? <laughs> Who thought that they would get rid of Paul? Well, well, I did. I, sometimes Paul and I don't see eye to eye. Interesting, Ricky. Okay. So Philippians was written to the church of Philippi. This church started because Paul had a supernatural vision of a man pleading for him to come and give them the gospel. Oh, I'm, I'm having a vision of, of money. Oh, Kia, Kia, it's in your hands. Oh, oh, Kia, you're giving me all the money. Oh, that's so nice. No, no, Ricky. Just, just no. Okay, fair enough. It was in Philippi that Paul was arrested for preaching the gospel. He was beaten and thrown in jail. And in jail with his friend Silas, they worshiped despite all the pain that they went through and they got to see an amazing miracle. Yes, the prison doors were miraculously thrown open and Paul and Silas were able to walk out. They even had time to go and tell the jailer about Jesus, and the jailer gave his life to Jesus right then. What an amazing legacy the Church of Philippi has, and the letter to the Philippians is an amazing truth bomb, reminding us that our joy, our praise, our prayers, our faith are not dependent on our circumstances, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whew, that is so good. Okay, let's jump right in and hear from Paul. Dear friends in Philippi, my name is Paul and I'm joined by my dear friend, Timothy. Both of us servants of Jesus, the anointed one. We write this letter to all of his devoted followers in this city, including your pastors and all the servant leaders in the church. May the blessings of divine grace and supernatural peace that flow from our wonderful Father and our Messiah, the Lord Jesus, be upon your lives. Okay, so this is another letter written by Paul from a jail cell. Goodness, that guy wrote half the Bible from jail. Not quite that much, but Paul did write a good portion of the New Testament from prison. This also helps us to see another major point of this letter, that our circumstances don't determine the truth. So good, Kia. Yes, what is going on in your life or in the world does not change the truth of Jesus' gospel, that God is a good father who created us. We can see that Paul has a deep understanding of this because he's writing to his friends from jail about blessings and he's praying over them. Wow, okay, let's hear more about Paul's prayer for his friends. My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I shared the gospel with you. I pray with great faith for you because I am fully convinced that the one who began this great work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches on it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, so Paul is filled with gratitude and prayer and praise from jail. How is that even possible? I think the guy is out of touch with reality. 
Well, Ricky, he doesn't seem to be swayed by the hardships of life, but maybe it's because he's not in touch with Earth's reality, but instead is in tune with God's kingdom reality. Paul has a revelation of God's love. God's goodness and love are a bigger reality for Paul than his circumstances will ever be. Okay, two things I want us to take away from what Paul just said. First, that he gives thanks for his union with the Philippians. He shared the gospel with the Philippians and it made them one. We are one with all believers because of Jesus. And second, Paul says that God is faithful to mature us in love. See, when you give your yes to God, God fully shows up and supports that yes. And he is faithful to mature us and grow us up into him. Let's hear more from Paul. It's no wonder I pray with such confidence since you have a permanent place in my heart. You have remained partners with me in the wonderful grace of God, even though I remain here in chains, standing up for the truth of the gospel. Only God knows how much I love you with the tender affection of the anointed one, Jesus Christ, our Messiah. Once again, Paul talks about his love for the Philippians being built on the gospel. Today, there are a lot of people with different opinions, varying experiences, and different points of view. To love well, we must experience the love of God. God made you, God made me, God made all of us to be in his family. We all turned away from God and Jesus brought us back to him. We can love because he loved us first. Come on, Kia, preach! Okay, let's go to Paul and hear his awesome prayer for his friends. I continue to pray for your love to grow and increase beyond measure, bringing you into the rich revelation of spiritual insight into all things. This will enable you to choose the most excellent way of all, becoming pure and without offense until the unveiling of Christ and you will be filled completely with the fruits of righteousness found in Jesus, the anointed one, bringing great praise and glory to God. Okay, Paul's major prayer for the Philippians is that their love will grow and increase. When this happens, they will have rich revelation and spiritual insight. So basically this means that people will experience the truth of God's kingdom and then live it out on earth. So that's what growing in love does. It releases heaven on earth. Wow, okay, Paul is coming for me again. He says that we can live pure and without offense. I'll admit it, I'm offended. Paul has offended me. And Josiah, you have offended me. And Kia, well, we're good, actually. Oh, <laughs> good, Ricky. But just wait, I'm sure you'll offend me soon. Okay, well then I'm just gonna pray that you grow in love. That's it, I'm offended. I'm offended by Kia, I'll admit it. Okay, sorry, Ricky. We can talk about that in a minute. But first I want to introduce everyone to a guest. How is Paul full of love in the face of pain? Well, Paul gave up his life for Jesus. And in that life that is fully submitted and surrendered to Jesus, he's able to find the joy and the peace that comes from being fully submitted. So I guess one way that you can equate fully surrendering is what you're willing to risk, what you're willing to give up. And we have this amazing guest, named Bob Greckendorfer, who's gonna tell us all about risk and reward. Hello, I'm Bob, and I'm a risk analyst, which means that I tell companies when they take a risk, how risky the risk is. The question on hand today is, what is the risk of surrendering to Jesus? Well, there are a lot of risks and gains. Some of the risks of choosing to surrender and follow Jesus include hardships on earth, giving up the way that you think about the world and the ways that it should go, giving up earthly desires and even persecution. 
and you'll give up your right to be offended and to live impurely. But the gains are astronomical. When you choose to follow Jesus, you have a relationship with your creator. You understand truth and you grow in strength and peace and love and faith and, and untold blessings. You become love through daily decisions and because of God's faithfulness. See, you get to become like Jesus through the fire and the, uh, the burning away that comes with hardships. You actually become who you were meant to be and then you look like Jesus and then you rule and you reign in eternity with Jesus. So surrendering to following Jesus means that you risk losing your own way, but you gain Jesus' way of living. And my professional recommendation is to surrender. Follow Jesus. Learn to surrender now. Learn to surrender every day. Live a surrendered life to Jesus and you will become like him over and out. Wow, what an incredible life that we have in front of us. And speaking of incredible life, let's go and talk to God a little bit. Okay guys, we are going to talk to God. I'm gonna tell you a couple questions to ask him. All those questions will come up on a pause screen and you can take a moment to interact and encounter God. All right, our first question is, God, where can I surrender to you in my life? And our second question is, God, what is a truth that I need to know to become more like you? And our third question is, God, will you grow me in love? Okay, have fun talking to God. guys. I hope you had fun talking to God. I love you. I'm praying for you and we'll see you next time. Bye. We are going to explore a note. No, no. <laughs> you better preach, Kia. You better preach, Kia. Come on. You better preach, Kia. <laughs> Okay, let's hear Paul's awesome prayer for his friends. Okay, so Philippians was written. Oh, sorry, I can't remember <laughs> anything. Paul talks about his love for the Philipp Philipp Philippians. Oh no. <laughs> Paul is talking about his love for the Philippines. <laughs> oh no. So Philippians was written. Uh, <laughs> my name is Timothy. <laughs> no. No, no, you're that's Paul. not my name. That's right. My prayers to God are full of praise to God. That is not, it's not a my yeah for, for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Two things. <laughs> this is what I just did. Two things. <laughs> just two. 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 To, two things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And you will experience the good. Okay. I was like, oh my god! I'm going. You will become like him. Okay.